and welcome to Edgy Space, your career choice. My name is Logan Lawson and you're watching the hottest educational show, Yen Mzanzi. Right now, please do tell your mother, tell your father, tell your friends, tell everyone you know to tune into the hottest educational show today as we're about to learn about chemical engineering. In the meantime, please do tweet us, it's a way to TV channel and don't forget to use the hashtag Edgy Space. Share with us your thoughts and your views and what other kiddies you'd like us to cover. But for now, we're going to the streets to get our five quick facts. Masamben. My name is Karabo. Libitela Kakibu Nolo. Ni Kamala Musabelo, Waramogo. Kamala Mutando, Rasinoko, Kamala Mutilani, Magamai Linga. I'm from Orlando West High. Kikena Mamatik, Orlando West High. Matiki, Orlando West High. Funde, Orlando West High School. Funda, Yamatiki High School. Doing grade 10. Nenza Metric. I'm doing grade 11. Funda grade 9E. Chemical engineering, Hante Hante. Key engineering, Etilaka, the different types of chemistry which is like life sciences, like Batsuba, invested in chemical sabon. Chemical engineering is a branch of engineering that uses principles of chemistry, applied physics, life science, microbiology and biochemistry, applied mathematics and economics to efficiently use, produce, transform and transport chemicals, materials and energy. A chemical engineer designs large-scale processes that converts chemicals, raw materials, living cells, microorganisms, and energy into useful forms of products. Like my was design plan and told when is something based on chemical engineering. And like Lentole is specifically about economy, this in general social not what. Chemical engineers are involved in many aspects of plant design and operation, including safety hazard assessments, process design and analysis, control engineering, chemical reaction engineering, construction specification and operating instructions. Chemical engineering yenza ukuthi into nje efana nokuthi ungathatha ihlahla usigaye usimane usiproducele to ukuthi ukhanda amabilisi izinto ezinjalo ke. The main role of chemical engineers is to design and troubleshoot processes for the production of chemicals, fuels, foods, pharmaceuticals and biologicals, just to name a few. They're most often employed by large-scale manufacturing plants to maximize productivity and product quality while minimizing costs. Well, the subject, the subject you can study is um, chemistry, life science, physical science and pure medicine. High school students can prepare for careers in chemical engineering by taking math, chemistry, biology and physics classes. Chemical engineers solve problems involving the design, production and use of chemicals, fuels, drugs and other products by using knowledge and skills from chemistry, physics and biology. Chemical engineers are among the highest paid engineering professionals. They design processes and safety procedures for handling dangerous chemicals, plan manufacturing systems, and test manufacturing facilities for safety and compliance with regulations. The chemical engineers are things that uh, most of the time they deal in chemistry, like doctors, some of them, I think. Chemical engineers develop economic ways of using materials and energy. Chemical engineers use chemistry and engineering to turn raw materials into usable products such as medicine, petrochemicals and plastics on a large scale. They are also involved in waste management and research. Both applied and research facets could make extensive use of computers. Now that we have our five quick facts, let's go speak to our lecturer and learn a little bit more about this field called chemical engineering. Come with me. Chemical engineering technology at the University of Johannesburg focuses on the handling, analysis, monitoring, properties and processing of a wide variety of materials such as chemicals, compounds, pastas, petroleum derivatives, mining ores, pharmaceuticals and gas products and more. Hey Prof. Hi, how are you? Well thanks and you? Oh fine. So I can disturb you for a second. Well, Prof, welcome to Edge Space and thank you so much for having us over. Thank you. Thank you very much for coming. Prof, my first question to you is what is chemical engineering? In simple terms, I would say chemical engineering is the application of 
natural science. Um, so we look at physical sciences, uh, life science, combined with um, mathematics and economics to the transformation of chemicals and or raw materials into useful product. So you're basically saying that the transformation from me being single to being in a relationship is chemical engineering. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's an interesting question. <laughs> well, probably yeah. that sounds amazing, but what are the requirements for chemical engineering? You need a score of five and above, meaning a minimum of 60% and above in math, physical uh, sciences, and English. And in addition to that, you need to meet a minimum APA score of 30. Now, Prof, I know that chemical engineering is a discipline within engineering, but are there any further disciplines within chemical engineering itself? Yes, chemical engineering is, is vast, and uh, there are various, various disciplines within chemical engineering. Uh, for instance, when you look at uh, petrochemicals, petrochemical industries, but they form part of chemical engineering. But you've got other disciplines as well. Look at uh, foods and, and beverage processing, for instance. It's another branch of chemical engineering. You look at pharmaceuticals industry, it's a branch of chemical engineering. So there are many, many, many disciplines which can even go all the way to material processing. Um, processing when you look at the manufacturing of tiles for instance and any other specialized materials they still fall under chemical engineering so you've got many many other uh, uh, sub disciplines within chemical engineering now prof what is the importance of having theoretical knowledge in a practical field like this for example if, if, if we look around, we look at the process that Sasol is using, for instance, uh, where uh, part of their plants, they use coal to produce fuel. So if we're student to understand the process, the student need to understand the chemistry behind that. What is coal made of? Um, and then what, are the, what is the reactivity of coal? What are the various conditions under which coal can, can react? So when you have that theoretical background, um, you can actually use it as a tool to design your process, to analyze various processes that you can be dealing with. So it's vital. Without that theoretical background, basically you cannot go anywhere as far as engineering is concerned. How often do students work in a lab to gain experience? Regularly, I would say, a minimum of four hours per week and we've got some dedicated days during a week where various groups will go to the lab but a typical time uh, per week I would say four hours. Do students go for in-service training to complete their qualification? I would say not in our current program P1 and P2 or in-service training is a requirement but in our new program we actually give the practical aspect through laboratory, specialized laboratory programs that we have developed in-house. Now, Prof, is it possible for students to work overseas with this kind of qualification? Sure. Um, I know a couple of students that I've taught before who are now working overseas. I know one who is working in Canada and some are working in, I think, on Australia. Qualifications from South Africa are recognized in other countries, and I can tell you some other countries which are signatories of that. Um, New Zealand, the United States, United Kingdom, Hong Kong, and there are a couple of other countries. So the student that we train here and when they move to those countries, which are signatories of the Sydney Accord, their qualifications are considered and they can actually work in the field with no problem. How much are the fees per year and can students apply for financial aid or bursaries? 
the current fees like for 2018 for our Bachelor of Engineering Technology program, the new program that was introduced last year, is 33,600 rand. And for the BTEC, I think it's around it's 44,500 rand. Now, when it comes to bursaries, there are various opportunities. Starting with the university itself, I think we've got what we call the merit bursary, which is based on academic performance. For instance, when we, we look at uh, students who come to register for first year, those who have got an APS score from 35 and above, they've got a certain portion of their tuition fees, which is covered by the university. Um, and the relevant information, I think, are covered in the student prospectus. And apart from that, um, there are other uh, applications that students can consider, like, you know, NESFAS, for instance, we know, but students have to apply on time. Well, Prof, thank you so much for all that knowledge. It was lovely chatting to you, and thank you so much for having us over. You are welcome. And we hope we're going to see you in the near future. We awesome. really enjoyed this time. Thank you. I definitely learned so much from our lecturer today, but I think it's time for a quick ad break. We'll be right back with more Edge Space, your career choice. Welcome back to Edge Space, your career choice. You know, guys, I could teach you all about chemical engineering myself. I mean, it's simple. All you have to do is mix things to form something, like H2O and even water. Uh, let's go speak to our student of the day. Come with me. Chemical reactions and properties are examined on a small scale and then applied to the real-world industrial settings. Chemical engineering involves chemical exchanges between substances when raw materials are turned into products. Gail, welcome to Edu Space and thank you so much for having us over. Thank you so much. My first question to you, Gail, is how did you find out about chemical engineering? Okay, so back in high school, we had university open days where they would just take us to a university. And then when we got there, we got to explore different study opportunities. And I just happened to be interested in engineering, specifically chemical engineering. How did you find out about chemical engineering? Okay, so it turns out that chemical engineering is more than what I expected it to be. I mean, the course itself is doable. If I had to meet that, uh, the guy who told me that chemical engineering is the hardest, I'd actually like explain to him that, you know, the other engineerings are probably like a walk in the park because chemical engineering is like very doable so far. <laughs> what about chemical engineering fascinated you so much that you decided to study this? Okay, so at the open day, um, they told me that engineering is all about problem solving, and I like that. So when it comes to chemical engineering specifically, they told me that it's the broadest engineering because it has a lot of applications. And then second to that, they told me that it's the most difficult, yeah. and I like difficult, so I was like, I'll take on chemical engineering. How are you finding chemical engineering? I mean, the course itself is doable. If I had to meet that man who told me that chemical engineering is the hardest, I'd actually like tell him that the other engineerings are maybe like a walk in the park. What subjects did you do in high school that you feel helped you with your studies now? Okay, so also like when we move on to the next level, there's a very significant link between the next level and the first year subjects, which links to the high school leaving subjects. So yeah, mathematics, physics, English and computers, applications and technology. Do you do a lot of practical assignments in order to put into practice what you learned in theory? Definitely. Uh, basically for all our chemical engineering based subjects, there is uh, practicals that we do in the laboratory. And then also uh, we have work integrated learning, which we do in our third year, where we go to an actual plant where there's actual productions happening. So we get to put into practice the theory that we did in class to an actual process producing actual products. <laughs> what has been the most interesting assignment you've had to work on? Okay, so the most interesting assignment I've ever had to do was chemical engineering design, where we had to like design a, like we were given a problem statement, and then we had to design a plan which will produce the specifications on the problem statement. So that was very interesting for me. Though we're doing it in a computer scale, but then like it gave me a feel of 
what I'll be doing in my work integrated learning and beyond when I'll be working. And what has been the most challenging assignment? So the most difficult assignment that I've ever had to do was in business management studies, where the lecturer just grouped us according to how he thinks is best. But then that for me was not the best way because the people in my group, the availability with mine was very different. When I'm available, they were not available. And then most of them didn't really want to work. But however, the assignment turned out to be great. It's just that the setup was not the best. easy. Yeah, the best, yeah. Girl, tell me, where do you see yourself after you've obtained your qualifications? Okay, so basically I want to work in a company that aims at building talent and driving innovation because I believe that with the chemical engineering background that I have, I can be able to do like greater things. I mean like if I were to work in a company and then I'm given maybe like an opportunity to express myself, then I'll be a problem solver that I've always wanted to be. My last question to you is what advice would you give someone who's watching the show right now and says, I want to be like her. So being a chemical engineer or being Gail Glover rather is all about discipline and not only academic discipline, also spiritual and social. Because I believe that if you can balance all the three, then your life will be a lot easier. I mean, you have to be serious when it comes to academics and you have to be serious when it comes to your spirituality and then you also have to be serious when it comes to your social life. Because like, if there's no balance between those three, then somewhere, somehow you'll be lacking. So yeah. Well, girl, it was lovely chatting to you. Thank you so much for having us over. Thank you so much. I'm starting to understand this whole engineering thing. I feel like we all need to be open-minded when it comes to certain things in life, especially choosing the career we'd like to get into. We are going to an ad break. We'll be right back with more Edge Space, your career choice. Welcome back to Edgy Space, your career choice. Don't forget today we're talking everything chemical engineering and we had Kimberly Clark to speak to a professional of the day. Come with me. Kimberly Clark South Africa is a subsidiary of the US based Kimberly Clark Cooperation. They market innovative health and hygiene products that people come into contact with every day. The major consumer brands include Kleenex, Huggies, Baby Soft, Carlton, New Freedom, and Cotex. They have three consumer products divisions adult and feminine care, baby and child care, and family care. A professional division and healthcare division. Mohammed, hi, how are you doing? Hi, how are you? I'm all thanks in yourself. Good thanks. Good man, can I have a seat? Yes, yes, sure. Take sure, seat. thanks man. I see you're a bit busy there. Yeah, yeah. Well, Mohammed, welcome to Edu Space, and thank you so much for having us over. No, it's a pleasure. Mohammed, my first question to you would be: um, Why did you choose chemical engineering opposed to all the other professions? Well, um, from when I was little, um, I always, you know wanted to, to do engineering, become an engineer. So like, I never saw myself uh, becoming like a lawyer, I never saw myself becoming a doctor, it was always an engineer. And then later on, why a chemical engineer was because the chemical engineering field is so vast, you know, um, from the oil industry, from the chemical industry to the paper industry. So it's such a big industry where mechanical and the other fields you more like sort of restricted, you know. Um, yeah, you just had so much of, like for example, even mining. Um, so yeah. What is the importance of chemical engineers in the world? So the importance um, is very crucial and vital um, because Basically, what a chemical engineer does is we take a raw material and turn it into into a product by by implementing you know uh, best practices, uh, low low lowest cost manufacturing things like that. Well, Mohammed, I see there's a lot of baby soft products around us. Are chemical engineers involved in paper making or tissue making, and what goes into it? Yes. Um, so at KC, we have uh, a broad spectrum of, of engineers to produce this product uh, from mechanical to electrical where you get me as a uh, chemical engineer um, so whereas in we have our fiber coming in and then therefore we, we take it to a pro through a process and the process is maintained by us and then we get our, our, our product which is uh, baby soft. Are chemical engineers investigating how to make use of materials that are deemed as waste? So, for example, the waste paper, if you take uh, this, 
the paper and you throw it in the bin, it goes to a landfill. That landfill then gets sorted and that paper comes back to us. And um, so we have a process in which we take uh, waste paper and we turn it into recycled fiber. And we use that recycled fiber in, in our other products. Okay, products such as? So for example, um, a subsidiary of Kimberly Clark is Kimberly Clark Professional. So for example, when you go to, um, to the loose in the mall and, and you see that hand towel, that's the towel that we make also. Uh, when you go to the garage and you wipe the oil from your dipstick, that, that paper, it's, it's paper that we make from recycled fiber. And also in your kitchen, the kitchen towel that you use to clean up spills and stuff, that's also from recycled fiber. Speaking about recycled fiber, what is biodegradable? And is that something that was discovered by a chemical engineer? So biodegradable is something that decomposes naturally by uh, microorganisms, uh, living organisms, uh, bacteria. It's uh, something that uh, doesn't pollute the environment. Um, like recycled fiber, it's, it's, it's biodegradable. Uh, something that, that, that's like a plastic, that's, that's biodegradable. So by highest rank, would you say that chemical engineering is the most difficult discipline? Yeah, well, you, <laughs> I mean, other disciplines would uh, argue that, uh, but uh, I feel that um, chemical engineering is, yeah. And even if you ask anyone in the universities as well, because I mean, I studied with other mechanical and electrical, and if you look at chemical engineering, it is, yeah. What does a day in the life of a chemical engineer look like? So basically, a day in a life would be um, looking at trends, uh, reporting on those trends, if there's any deviations, investigating those deviations, uh, trying to come back. So it's all about also looking at targets, uh, achieving those targets, um, and also, you know, always trying to break records. Um, for, uh, for example, also problem solving, you know, if, if something is not working in the plant, we need to go and apply what, what we've learned at university um, and, and apply it on in a real life situation. So that's yeah, in the, in the gist of it. Mohammed, I see that you have your reflector jacket there, as well as your glasses. Do you ever encounter dangerous situations where you have to wear protective gear? Yeah, so the point where I said about solving problems in, in the plant, so for example, we have a lot of uh, bleaching chemicals for our recycle fiber. So those are very sort of uh, harmful uh, chemicals because you obviously you can burn with them. So for example, if there's a pump failure and we need to investigate why is it failing, we need to go down into a chemical band. And to go down into that band, obviously you need uh, a face shield, you need an apron, you need chemical resistant gloves, um, and also a gas test needs to be done. Do you make new discoveries when processing raw materials? Because chemical engineering is such a, such it's so vast. So if, for example, yeah, at, at Kimberly Clark, we look at the process, how to, how to improve the process. So for example, water, how can we, how can we uh, reduce our, our fresh water consumption? So that's how we sort of optimize the process, come up with new ways to try and save on, save on water and also steam and gas. I mean, this seems like so much fun, I tell you, but what has been the highlight of your career? Well, the highlight, would certainly be um, graduating from chem with cum laude and also working for, for a global corporation as, as, as KC. Chemical engineers seem to be needed in almost every field. Does this mean there's a lot of job opportunities for qualified chemical engineers in South Africa and abroad? Um, right now, if you look at the economy and stuff, it, 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 it's really tough for graduate um, coming out of university, trying to get a graduate program and trying to get into, you know, into, um, into work. But I think once you have a uh, set amount of years and experience, five, five to ten years, then yeah, the, the opportunities are there. Well, Mohammed, this is my last and final question. What is the earning potential for a junior chemical engineer and a senior chemical engineer? For a junior chemical engineer, um, I would say it's, it's decent coming out of university, you know, into work. Um, it's, 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 it's a nice salary, but uh, obviously as you climb higher, it, it, it does get a lot better. Well, Mohamed, it was lovely chatting to you. Thank you so much for having us. Anytime. You're more than welcome. Awesome.
Oh my goodness, what a jam-packed show we had today. I trust that you've learned just as much as I did. I just want to send a shout out to you, Jay, for providing those students and shout out to Kimberly Clark for providing that baby soft. Please do tweet us at Soweto TV channel and don't forget to use the hashtag Space. Share with us your thoughts and your views and what other careers you'd like us to share. From me, Logan Lawson and the team, it is bye-bye for now. Until next week, Monday, same time, same place. This is Space. your career choice.